Welcome back everyone. I had a request to do another video about using the develop persona in Affinity Photo 2. The viewer wanted me to take this raw image and see what I could do with it. Well, here's what I was able to do in just about seven minutes. I started with this lovely but somewhat flat image of Santorini, Greece. I'll leave a download link for you if you want to follow along. I thought I would start by making some global changes in the Basics tab, but quickly changed my mind. Instead, I thought I would tackle this one section of the image at a time using the Overlay feature. So, I decided to start with the left side of the sky by clicking on the Gradient Overlay button in the left-hand toolbar and dragging out a Gradient Overlay. When you apply an overlay, any changes you make only apply to the overlay area itself and the strength of the effect depends on the gradient itself. In this case, I'll go to the Type drop-down and choose an elliptical gradient. I'll manipulate the gradient position, size and shape by click, dragging on the different nodes until I get it where I want it. With the gradient in place, I went to the Basics tab on the right-hand side of the studio. I raised the black point up a little bit and then raised the saturation and vibrance up, trying to pull out some color but those didn't do much. Next, I clicked the white balance checkbox and raised the temperature up to 32% to make that corner with the sun a little warmer. Note that while you are on this gradient overlay, you can still make changes to its shape and positioning. All right, this is a bit too dark. So I'll go to the shadows and highlights checkbox and then raise up the highlights a bit. Then I'll go back up to the top and reduce the black point slider by about half. There, that looks more natural. Now, to work on another section of the image, I can add another overlay. To do this, I'll go to the Overlays tab on the right side of the studio. You can add a brush overlay, which I'll demonstrate later, or another gradient overlay. You can also delete an overlay by selecting it and clicking on the little trash can. I'll use another gradient overlay for now and drag it out on the top right portion of the sky. It's still set to elliptical, so I'll just drag on the little handlebar nodes to get the coverage where I want it. Then, I'll raise the saturation and vibrance way up to get as much color as I can, and then I'll click on the white balance box. This time, I'll move the slider to the left to get a cooler temperature to that side of the sky. Just about 13% should do. All right, now I'll add another overlay to my image. I'll go back to the Overlays tab, and this time I'll select the brush overlay and I'll paint over all of these buildings. I want to make them brighter and more colorful if possible. Like all brushes, you can make the brush head smaller or bigger by clicking on the left or right square bracket keys a few times. I'll make mine smaller to get in some of these finer areas. Okay, that looks good. Now I'll go back to the Basic tab and start by raising up the brightness a bit to like 14%. Then I'll click on the Shadows and Highlights checkbox and raise the highlights up to about 90% and the shadows up to about 30%. All right, now, if I zoom in here a bit, notice this area at the top where I over-selected and you get this halo effect. I can get rid of this pretty easy by going to the Eraser-shaped Overlay Erase tool in the left-hand toolbar. I'll make my brush head smaller by clicking on the left square bracket key a few times, and then I'll just carefully paint away the areas I don't want. I've sped this up a little so as not to bore you. It's a little tedious. Hopefully someday, Affinity will provide better selection tools in the Develop Persona, like the Selection Brush Tool or Pen Tool. I think that would make this a bit easier. Anyway, I should mention that if you ever want to see a before and after version of your work, you can click on the Split View button at the top and move the slider back and forth to see the difference you've made. So far so good, but I've got one more thing to show you before I let you go. There are a few areas within the buildings that I want to make pop out if I can. So, I'll go back to the Overlays tab and select Brush Overlay again. Then, I'll paint over a few of these buildings that are yellow or pinkish beige colours. I made my brush head really small here to work in the details. 
It takes a little bit longer, but I think it'll be worth the extra time. I'll get this pool at the bottom too. All right, that looks good. Now, I'll go back to the basic tab and I'll adjust the brightness up to about 11%. I'll move the saturation and vibrance up to near the max. And I'll go to the highlights and shadows and raise the highlights and lower the shadows. And so yeah, I think that's a huge improvement between the before and after. I'll just click on the develop button and be done with it for now. All right, that's about it for today. If you learned something and want to see more of this kind of content, please click those like and subscribe buttons. And if you're feeling generous, this channel runs on caffeine. There's a link to buy me a cup of coffee in the descriptions. Not necessary, but certainly appreciated. Have a great day, everyone.